First up today, some cricket information and some stories from uh, one of our great test batsmen, Ross Taylor, who retired earlier this year from uh, international cricket and uh, was a a memorable send-off he got for one of the finest and best servants of New Zealand cricket ever, uh, Ross Taylor. But rather like a gambler, I suppose, who's got an addiction, seems to me that Ross Taylor can't quite make the cut from cricket, can't quite give up the gloves and the bats and uh, is still making his way out to the wicket in domestic cricket here for Central Districts. And in fact, he's in Napier today, I think, preparing for a T20 match for CD. Anyway, Ross, I thank you very much indeed for your time. Having a bit of a problem giving this old game of flannel falls up, are you? Hi, Brendan. Yeah, I've been called a few things. I, uh, like a gambling addiction, that's a new one. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it's something that you've done for 20 years. And, uh, still enjoy it. Where I guess the reasoning behind was to give give back and um, almost wean off cricket, and then you know just go cold turkey after after doing it for twenty odd years. Mm, mm. And so you, you're just playing in the shortened versions of the game. So what is it about this form of the game at the level you're playing now that you could get some satisfaction from? Uh, oh, I think um, you know obviously winning games of cricket, hitting four and sixes regardless of um, what's happening uh, is still good, but. Obviously, you know, 38 and a lot of youngsters coming through hopefully can pass on a bit of knowledge and wisdom to them over over the coming weeks. And you have no interest in playing longer versions of the game like, for example, the Plunkett Shield? No, I, um, I've just started a new job uh, in April. Uh, sorry, in August. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure I'll be able to get the, the time off work to, to go and do that. But, um, no, obviously the... The Christmas period and, and having your family travel around with you makes things a lot easier. Yeah, so what do you... You mentioned 38 years of age. Uh, there are 38-year-old test cricketers, I imagine. There's, there's an 18-year-old playing test cricket as well at the moment, but there's a few at 38. So do you think it's feasible now for, say, someone like uh, Tim Southey, who's just become captain of the um, Black Caps, as we know, for him to continue until he's 38, or is it more something that probably batsmen can do rather than bowlers? Uh, well, obviously, Jimmy Anderson showed that uh, it can be done, yeah, but he, yeah. a, long, a long time ago, gave up uh, playing white ball cricket. Um, New Zealand, we don't play as many tests. Um, you know, six, eight test matches a year, it's pretty hard to be able to, you know, maintain your body, you know, when you're not playing that often, where Jimmy is, is able to do that because England plays so many games of, you know, test cricket, and obviously their their first class system where you know if you only playing every now and then it's probably really hard yes i've been watching him in pakistan where he's been there with the england team and i think he's playing in um uh you know a couple of these test matches and and he's taking wickets uh and he's proving very miserable with with the ball and he doesn't look 40 does he he must be an inspiration i suppose to someone like um tim southey yeah i think uh, tim has taken you know um you know inspiration from him uh you know, he, I think he wants to play for for a while and, um, you know, seeing someone who does a similar role to him uh, probably he hasn't been as fortunate uh, as Jimmy to have bowled with the Duke in, uh, in over half of his games. But um, saying that, obviously, Tim being the test captain now adds a new dimension to it, how he deals with both bowling and, and all the other stuff. Uh, you know, it's going to be an interesting time for him, but I'm sure he'll do a good job. Did it surprise you that Kane decided to give up the reins as captaincy of the test side? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it was, um, you know, test cricket is the ultimate. And, you know, you, from an outsider looking in, I suppose, just being in there, I thought maybe 2020 would have been mm. uh, the one that he might have given up. But then, in saying that, um, there's probably no natural success of the the 2020 cricket and, you know with a lot of players these days they rest you know if you're playing all three formats um, um, you know they'll they'll need to you know be rested in those type of um, some of these games so mm. being able to do that um, and go with it um, you know 
It was a surprise, but uh, I suppose looking at it from afar, it's probably not a not as big a surprise. I guess the other thing here is that I suppose everyone, when they get towards the end of their career, not necessarily everyone, you're probably an exception to it, uh, still kind of figures that they can play in some of these T20 leagues around the world. There's plenty of them offering, I imagine, good money. But if you're not playing T20 international cricket, uh, it would be very hard, wouldn't it, to nail any sort of contract for a T20 league anywhere in the world? Yeah, I think it would be. Um, I think a lot of it is who you know. But if you're a world-class player and you've got the name of Kane Williamson, I think they're always going to be sought after. He's only 32. Mm. Uh, but once you do get on a bit older, it becomes a lot harder to get into the Premier tournaments. Um, but no, I think, uh, as we've seen, you know, I think a lot more players will give that up, the game up earlier to go and pursue those. But, uh, you know, hopefully for New Zealand's sake, that doesn't happen anytime soon. So it was, an, as you say, it was a little bit of a surprise to see Kane uh, give up the captaincy uh, role. And I think a lot of people were surprised that it didn't go to Tom Latham, who's done a pretty good job, I think, in the nine test matches uh, he's led in Kane's absence. But I wonder whether what's happened with the English team under uh, McCullum and Stokes has probably set off um, thinking in a lot of other cricketing countries that we've got to change the way we play test cricket as well and uh, maybe Tom Latham who we know is a a very good defensive cricketer and a very solid opening batsman Um, it might have been a case that uh, well we don't necessarily want to do everything that McCullum and Stokes are doing but maybe we've got to go with a captain who might be prepared to take a few more risks yeah, I mean, at the same time, it's like telling somebody what to do. If you want someone to be more aggressive, you can tell them to do it. Um, yeah, I think, as I said, it was a, I found it was a little bit of a surprise with um, Shelby getting it, but I think that he'll do a good job. I think there's also an element of trying to keep him in the game here in New Zealand, as we talked about before. A lot of these tournaments around the world, someone like Tim Southey will be sought after. So with the test carrot of him captaining the test team, um, having him hang around for a couple more years probably stops him going and doing some of those gigs that he may well have done if he wasn't captain. Mm, for sure. Let's uh, turn to what McCullum and Stokes have been doing for England. I think uh, today if they uh, win this match that'll give them 9 out of 10 since Brendan McCullum came in as uh, coach of the English side. We knew how good a start he made because he, he won that series against us. Um, for someone like you who's always been an aggressive batsman regardless of which form of the game you're playing um, you must be enjoying what McCullum and Stokes are doing with this English team. Yeah, I haven't watched a lot of it. Um, but no, I think Tess did need some help um, um, and things. So you know, the Tess game needed to be done like this. Whether it will catch on, no one knows. But you know you're in for a battle when you do come up against England. Um, you know, we always knew that... Uh, Brendan's an attacking captain and, and would have been like that as a coach. Uh, but I think it's probably the, the Stokes dimension. I think those two work really well together. Um, they've got some young players that are coming in um, who were probably brought up on the game of 2020 cricket uh, and coming out there and playing an entertaining brand. Whether it's enough to save Test cricket in the years to come, who knows? But uh, it's definitely very entertaining and um, I'm sure, um, you know, when they come out here and play in, in February, I think it's going to be a fantastic series to to see Stokes and McCallum in their own backyard, but to obviously see how um, how Tim Tim goes with uh, however he goes about it, this, his yeah, style of yeah. going forward. Yeah, two Kiwi boys, eh, McCullum and Stokes? <laughs> Headhunted by the rest of the cricketing world. Well, yeah, I suppose England cricket has got a lot more money than New Zealand cricket, so I suppose that might have been a factor in it as well. Um, also, I'm just looking at this, I don't know where you've seen this young 18-year-old uh, leg spinner playing for England in his debut, and I'm thinking an 18-year-old anywhere in the world, that's uh, quite remarkable. I think Sachin Tendulkar. <coughs> Might have been playing test cricket at 18, but it's pretty rare. I couldn't imagine if the old school had still been sitting uh, in the boardroom at the MCC uh, that you would ever have seen an 18-year-old playing test cricket for England, right? Yeah, I mean, and to do the hardest start in in test cricket and bowl leagues, but um, I'm sure if Shane Warne was still around, he would be um, pretty happy. (laughs) Yes, he would be. to see a young player come through and uh, succeed, get a five on debut. Um, haven't seen much of him, but, uh, you know, he was a standout in the Under-19 World Cup and the way that he started Test cricketer. 
Um, you know, he's going to put pressure on Leach, who is their incumbent. But uh, no, once again, I think it was a bold move to play him. But uh, just shows you, you know, you, you chuck in these youngsters, you never know what you're going to get. And I think he's going to be someone that uh, we can look forward to in the years to come with the amount of test cricket that England do play. Uh, he's going to be a, be a find and, and get, get a lot of wickets. Well, it was remarkable watching the first uh, innings of the Pakistan team in this match here where, um, you know, they batted first on the first morning and this young kid, I suppose he's not much more than a kid, bowled five overs on the first day before lunch in his debut. And I'm thinking, again, you just have to take your hats off to Stokes, I suppose. It was his decision at the end, but I imagine he'd probably had a discussion with Brendan McCullum before they went out there. But um, this has just completely sort of kind of radicalised and revolutionised a lot of thinking around some of the traditional rituals of Test cricket, isn't it? Well, I think uh, in, in Pakistan, you always, spin ball always comes on early, but you're always nervous. I can think back to my first test, but to get them in the game early, um, to get that first ball and first over out of the way. Um, but then you're also installing a lot of confidence in a youngster, and nothing more powerful than a coach and captain um, giving them that confidence mm. and that backing. Uh, and he's repaid them with uh, you know, some, some pretty good figures. That's right. Uh, he went for 37, I think, from those first five overs on the first morning. But yesterday he got a fifer. So, and, um, uh, you know, it's an amazing story. Anyway, Ross, I won't keep you any longer. I know you've got some T20 commitments down there in, in Napier. But I thank you very much indeed for your time. And you have a very enjoyable Christmas. No, thanks for having me.